Good morning. How are you diddling? Welcome to another live broadcast, another dazed, confused, and generally buggered. And cheers to you. Um, as always, every morning we're here live answering your questions about social media, about video, trying to get your content out further, trying to get you creating more content. Now and again, we even get uh, somebody special uh, who is uh, joining us. And this morning we have, um, so I, I don't mean special in that kind of way, but um, <laughs> hopefully we can hear him. Hello, Alan. How are you? Hello, Simon. Very, very, very long time in the making. Absolutely. We've been meaning to talk to each other like this for a long, long time. So it's um, it's cool to have you here finally. <laughs> it's, it's been, I don't know, five, six years that you've known me. Yeah, uh, roughly. Whether in my professional guise or whether under my, my alter ego that was retired a while back. M Mr. Harry Britt. <laughs> I mean, I'm now much more kind of Mr. Grey-haired. Yeah. I've still got hair. It's still, still there. Got, it's still there. It's still there. Yeah. So, um, so people know who a little bit more about you, because obviously mm -hmm. I've just uh, brought you in here. Uh, who are you? What is it that you do? All that kind of stuff. Okay. So I'm, I'm Alan Spicer. I've been a YouTuber for about seven, eight years. I've been in web development for 11, 12 years. I've been a YouTube consultant for about three. Um, my income is now pre pretty much primarily based on the hard work that I've done over the last three, four years of planting seeds, generating affiliate income, building a back catalog of educational content, learning how to blog, learning how to web design. Um, for four or five years, I was running a web development company um, in which then I realized that people may need to start embracing this new medium, which is video. I fell in love with this, this <laughs> wonderful thing to the point where it became addictive. And then I, I just kept deep diving into that rabbit hole, which is now pretty much my, my, my life and my income. I then stumbled across um, a very lucky email at the start of this year before the world turned to whatever it is now. <laughs> Who knows? I, I got an email inviting me to VidCon in the United Kingdom. I was invited over as a very, I'll, I'll be honest, a very strong search term. They typed in YouTube Certified Expert UK. And the only person that beats me is Google. Um, wow. So <laughs> they, they awesome. invited me to um, what is now um, a giant hospital, um, mm. NHS Nightingale, which is the London Excel Centre. Um, and I hung out with the VidIQ lot. And then after a while, hopefully I impressed them enough that they, they brought me in. So I'm now Alan Spicer, entrepreneur, and Alan Spicer, customer success consultant for VidIQ. Cool. Okay. Well, we'll come to VidIQ in a little bit because it's quite an interesting sure. tool for a lot of people to potentially look at. Um, first things first. So how did you learn more about YouTube in the first place? Because a lot of people just think you kind of stumble across this information. How did you go about finding more out about YouTube? It's It was kind of a, a, a happy stance thing, really. Mm -hmm. um, because I've been on the platform for about eight years, initially... I was trying to find a way to teach my web development clients how to use video. Okay. Um, and eight, nine years ago, I was flicking through and I found, you know, your, yourself and other people daily vlogging. And people were a bit confused that, okay, so you, you either, what, you talk about your life or you, you make products? <laughs> how does this work? And there was those stiff, horrible adverts that you've seen in, like, doctor surgeries and on TVs and the early days of green screens where people just couldn't figure it out properly. So yeah. I was learning the optimization advantage of a video. Mm -hmm. um, the idea that if you was to put a video into a blog, how much better that blog would do. So I took my search engine optimization from the web world and applied it to video. After about three to six months, I got addicted to the idea of that I, I could just hit record and be sarcastic on camera. I could record something funny or weird. And it very quickly became a, I'll be honest, I was going through a very bad personal time. Um, horrible relationships. Right. Uh, I'd moved up north from, from Kent and things. That's a good thing. Things. That's not a bad thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, no, the north is brilliant. Um, the north is home. When I, when I go for, 
when I go to, to, to Kent for Christmas, I don't go home. I go, I go to Kent to you see my family. Kent. I yeah. come home to Yorkshire. Um, but ba basically, I move north. Unless you do in your, your, your mid-20s, unless you've gone to university, you kind of seek that great perhaps. Mm -hmm. So I moved up north. I was going through a rough patch, but I was able to use YouTube to vent my life, either my feelings or, or learn or experiment. And then you dabbled in, for I find, once I love something, I just can't get enough of that thing. So when mm -hmm. you learn cars, you just research cars. In my case, I fell in love with online video and I had to learn everything about it, cameras and strategies. And I had to mix the, the thing between the, the web development and the tags and the titles. So the first two years, it was a hobby that I just couldn't get enough of. Yeah. And then yeah. after a while, it's, it, it's, it becomes an addiction that you can't stop. You love seeing that metric go up a little bit and up a little bit. And oh, if I tweak this bit, oh, oh it did it, that. And if I tweak that bit, oh, and that. And it's just a constant professional and personal uh, improvement loop that you just can't stop. Yeah, exactly. um, and because the platform's consistently changing as well, you're constant, constantly it. learning I, as well, aren't you? So that's that's what I like. I, I I love I love being able to to, to to learn it, but then I. I was able to see the positive feedback at the time. Um, and then I was able to twist it just at the right time into my business. Because after four or five issues of being silly and weird, I, I realized that if I just taught it from a different angle and then ironically come 360, like I, I was going to learn how to do video, but then I learned how to do video and now I made it my business. Um, I, I, I then love the the feedback loop of instead of it being views nowadays which i still get a fair few yeah um instead of views it's now the improvement of that client being able to go oh so if you just tweak that bit you can see and then i can see their growth and i can see yeah. their improvement so quite interesting then, because you mentioned about clients there how important would you say video is to a brand to a business these days See, um, nowadays, I, I believe the, the statistics, like 80% of all media consumed is video. If, if you're not able to create something visual these days, then you're missing out on a huge chunk of your own market for, for different, different ways, really. A, a, a picture paints a thousand words, and a video is nonstop pictures. Um, when it comes to YouTube, it can be shared anywhere. It can index anywhere. You could make a, an hour-long live stream that you can rip content out of for the for the end of days like yeah. one of my my biggest north stars is a guy called gary venichuk mm -hmm. in which he puts out so much content but it's not necessarily for the con sake of content today it's for the sake of documenting his life documenting his growth looking back on trends he wants to look back in five ten years time and go look i called tiktok now i called <clears throat> yeah. like he called ad like Google ads five years ago and it called like Facebook and LinkedIn and right. So when it comes to video, what you've got to think of is you may be creating a load of videos now that you may not necessarily see a return on investment immediately, but I have 450 videos right now on my channel. It took two and a half years, three years to get to that back catalog. And at the start of this year, the world decided to sit indoors and Netflix my content. I now, do apologize. I've got somebody ringing at my doorbell. You keep going, Daryl, and I'll be back in a second. Okay. So the, the way it basically worked is because I had that back catalog, I was able to garner that attention. So at the start of my channel, I was getting 20, 30, 50 views a day. And now I'm getting around about seven, 8,000 views per day. And I'm growing at a rate of around about 1,400, 1,500 subscribers per month right now. Because the power of the, the compound interest of every single one of those videos helps you grow further and faster. Now, the advantage of each one of these videos and the compound interest that you can get with these videos is that now that I am growing at the rate of 14, 1500 subscribers per month, that also feeds into the affiliate marketing, that feeds into any client like base requests. I've got 450 videos that are testimonials to the knowledge that I've learned through my hobby. And hopefully over time, you watch 5, 10, 20 of my videos, you trust that I know what I'm talking about, and then you'll reach out or you'll suggest me or you'll 
use one of the, the tools that I may suggest in one of the videos. I'm not directly hard selling to you, but I have such a wide spider web that I continue to catch the flies in that, that then monetarily helps me, my business or my brand. That's brilliant. I'm, I'm hoping the poster lady hasn't woken up Max. He is uh, crying at the moment, but um, fingers crossed. And um, <laughs> so I want to open up the floor to people asking you questions. We've had some questions come in anyway. Okay. Um, so right now, if you're watching uh, on the live stream, feel free to drop some questions into the feed. We'll do our best to answer as many of them as we can do. Max is screaming. So we're <laughs> going to go to the first question. Um, oh, I hate the post people sometimes. They do a fantastic job. Absolutely brilliant, especially in the current climate. But because we live in flats, they always just press every buzzer to be let into the building. Uh, <laughs> so first question uh, came through from Paul, who is asking the question, is it OK to ask for sub for sub? I, I highly advise against this. For Now, and this isn't for the stereotypical thing, right? OK. I'm, I'm going to twist it in a different angle, right? Because everybody knows that it's annoying, right? Mm -hmm. right? But what you're actually doing is you may be growing your numbers. You may do fantastically well. Your name may be Tom or Tim or Tem. And if you know who that is recently, then he's annoying and he's gone, right? But sub for sub hurts you. It, it, it inflates your number. Good. It makes you feel egotistically brilliant. Great. But what it actually does is it means next time you publish that video, that sub for sub person who's not watching your videos doesn't engage with your content. And YouTube goes, oh, I, okay. So he just got 20 new subscribers. None of them watched. Maybe their content's not good enough. Maybe we won't rank. Yeah. And you'll put out a video and it's not engaged with. You don't get that comment or that like or any form of share. So they are zombies. They are yeah. pointless. And if YouTube chooses to push out your content to a random percentage of your subscriber base and you've inflated that subscriber base with a hundred really fantastic people and a million really crap zombies, <laughs> then 10% of that will go to mostly zombies that do nothing. So yeah, then YouTube's going to go, well, yeah. that could have been a fantastic video, but nobody cared. So yeah. we won't care either. Yeah, so basically, don't do it. <laughs> I mean, I, I tell it. people not what to. Is yeah. the, I don't get it. I don't, no. it, it, it it's, is it... Like, like so I'm, I'm talking vanity, to that one vanity, person vanity looking metric, at me right yeah. now. It's all in your head. What you should focus on is the 10, 20 that really focus and really care about you yeah. than the 50 that aren't real. It's a metric for vanity only. Absolutely. And also, I mean, back in the day when we first started doing, doing YouTube as well, it was more of a, it was a metric to try and get your um, channel to be partnered and then you could start making money because back in the day, not everybody got monetization, which I thought was probably a better platform, but we won't go into that. Uh, <laughs> so uh, next question, which came through from Helen is asking, is a thumbnail important? And we've got a follow-up question from her as well, which I'll ask you once you've answered this one. Okay. Um, yes, Helen. Um, the way the platform works is by human interaction. Now, if something was ugly, here's a loo roll, Right. If it's they're ugly, very attractive these days at the moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I'm 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 just bowling out and flexing. <laughs> I've no word of a lie, I've got a load sat there. Why? We didn't hoard, we just bought it before it like the world Yeah, yeah, in, you're saying in manure. <laughs> right. So so this 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 looks ugly. And if you used to put this randomly somewhere, if you used to find this in the middle of a music festival, you'd be slightly concerned that it looks disheveled and someone may have played with it. Right? Now if it looked all nice and pretty and packaged. It looks much more appealing, much safer, much more entertaining. Now, when it comes to branding, right, you can have the best iPhone in the world, right? And if it looks ugly and battered and bruised and it's got red and pink and green and it's, it, it's hideous and it's lumpy and it's made even slightly slimy, no one's going to touch that, right? Yeah. But if it's sleekly packaged and it looks professional, it not only increases the value of that product, Right? but it intrigues the person to pick it up. Now, when it comes to thumbnails, YouTube's a visual, very visual platform. Nowadays, if you can't, you can't clickbait. I used to be no. the master of clickbait for five years. I did so much clickbait back in the day. <laughs> 45 million views I got on a previous <clears throat> channel and wow. 45,000 subscribers. And I accelerated it easily 35 million within like a year before I decided to retire that channel for whatever reason. Now, 
clickbait can be fantastic, but if you don't offer what's inside as well, it might as well just be a slimy box. So the thumbnail needs to tell you exactly what's in it, the value it is offering, honestly, right? But in an eye-catching way, right? Mm -hmm. If there's too much text, then people can't read it on mobile. If if it's weird, if, if the, the focus of the thing, like if Simon's making a video about his baby and there's a picture of a cat and a donkey in the background, <laughs> We're confused, but if it's just a that's where that baby, video did crap. Yes, <laughs> well, if it's a picture of the baby and it says first tooth, you know immediately it's about the baby's first tooth or the the reason he hates the post woman, right? It's just <laughs> so the thumbnail is the eye to the soul of that video, and if you get that wrong, you immediately lose it because if you don't get the click, you can't. That could be the best view video in the world, but if they haven't clicked on the video, they haven't watched it to know that you're Spielberg, right? Yeah. So you need to package it properly. Otherwise, you're just a slimy iPhone box. So generally, most people then not, you'd suggest not taking a, a like the standardized thumbnail that they give you, perhaps. The, the auto-generated ones have got better. <laughs> mm -hmm. they, they now focus in on smiles and, and, and emotion. It used to literally just be the middle frame. And it was like, <laughs> yeah. every, every time, no matter what. Um, but no, if if you can, if you take an hour to make a video, then take at least 20 minutes to figure out what the thumbnail could look like. Mm -hmm. Pointing or, right, you can generate a, a thumbnail template that you use most of the time. 95% of my thumbnails have my face in them because I'm the core focus. That way I don't have to put a logo, right? Yeah. But if, if, you, if you're using something that is, consider and thought more like just just think how you use youtube in itself uh, if, if it could be that an identical video both about slime and if one's got a, a frame halfway through where you're not quite sure what they're making and on the other one it clearly has a picture of slime and the word slime then you're going to click the one that's better polished yeah and it doesn't have to take much time you've got, you've got things like canvas uh, canvas canva a pick monkey gimp mm -hmm. Right? You don't have to spend money if you, if you don't want to. Or go to Fiverr, get a template off of somebody, right? and then use that template and just switch out the graphics. Just you know? change Slowly it. Yeah. Over time, you can get better. You see, you've just kind of basically just answered the next question, which was how do I make my thumbnails look good? Is there any, are there any apps or so, – obviously vidIQ does it, and we're going to talk about that in a bit. But are there any, is there anything else other than like Canva and stuff like that? Is there anything dedicated to YouTube thumbnails that does it – um, or would help you create something better than you could generally create. See, I, I've, I've, over time, what I've done is when it comes to choosing a thumbnail and making a thumbnail, you first have to do the research before you even touch your software. Now, there's certain defaults within a niche. Now, if you think gaming, you immediately think bright colors, computer sprites, big letters and big words. Now, if you think of banking and people like Graham Stephan and stuff like that, you're thinking dark colors and numbers and like, so Business. what you do is, you, yeah, yeah. yeah you, you, you figure out your niche, right? So let's say you're baking cakes. You then go and type in chefs and cakes and food. You have a look at how their thumbnails are done by standard. Is there some kind of theme that's continually used? Is there always a pastels colors? Is there always a, a font? Is there a lead creator in that field that you could borrow or ed be educated from because it's not stealing it's standing on the shoulders of giants and learning from their hard work in the first mm -hmm. place pewdiepie has put out possibly tens of thousands of videos in the past so he's done the work to have a look at how that thumbnail works i've been on youtube for eight years three years as an educator my thumbnails right at the start are much worse than they were now because I've learned, oh, well, that thumbnail style worked. Well, that outline worked. Well, that text might work. And so what you do is you you, you look at your niche. And then it's, you pick it's up... It's almost things. doing some proper um, A-B testing, basically, almost. Well, that's it? it. That's it. And, and you've got all the time in the world. You can always go back and replace that thumbnail, right? It's not set in stone, right? Yeah. It's, not, it's not carved like the Ten Commandments of I'm not religious. So <laughs> I'm just going to get abused, right? But, but there are there are general rules of thumb, right? Which is show or scream it with text. So yeah. minimal text. So two or three words that scream, you know, uh, how to live stream, right? Yeah. 
or a picture that's clearly a webcam, if you're talking about webcams or knitting or needles, that you either hero focus on the content, which is here is the thing, here is my loo roll, right? And it's center of the screen, it just says free loo roll or whatever, right? That way you know it's about loo roll or right, you say it with minimal text as much as possible. Mr. Beast is yeah. fantastic at these, right? And try on YouTube, I don't know which way I'm pointing, Right, try and try and keep the most Vice important versa. things Opposite, yeah. on the on the left hand side <laughs> of the, the thingy, right? Because in the Western world, we read top to bottom, left to right. So you keep the important things on the left hand side, and anything that's either representational or sacrificial can be on the right. Because there's a lot that gets cut off. You get your timestamp and you get your your playlist thing, and mm. so yeah. But then then have a look at things like GIMP um, or Pixel, um, the Pick Monkey and Canva. All these are free. Yeah. Um, I use. I use. I'm. <laughs> I'm, I'm. This. This is going to kill a few people. I've got. I've got. Um. I've got. Um. Photoshop, but I use. Um. I use PaintShop Pro. Brilliant. And have done for <laughs> forever, um, mainly because Coral Coral Draw was what we used at school when I was yeah. a, 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 wee, a wee human being and I couldn't get past it. And I've, I'm, I've never been graphically good. But then when I stepped into web design, I had a team. And then when I stepped out of it, I had to learn something. So I slowly learned layering stuff. So once yeah. you've got a, a, a template that you know that you can switch out, have a look at my, my thumbnails for about 18 months. It was pretty much me in front of there with just a new wacky face and a new piece of text. Right, it doesn't have to be ex extravagant. Mm. You just have to make it clear what that video is about. So, quick question for you then, one for me, because obviously we know titling is important. Is it important to have because you can make a much longer title? Mm -hmm. Is it important to have the title within the thumbnail then, or is it just important yes. to have elements of? Yeah, ele certainly elements of the, the the word the phrase you're looking for is curiosity gap. You either need to use words that aren't in the in the the title that support the title um so for example if the title was 10 secrets of working from home and the thumbnail was you in a, a clearly a house that says wow amazing then mm. you're like oh, okay i couldn't believe it i couldn't believe the title or in my case when it's tutorials um you make it undeniably obvious so i'm pointing at something and it says add subtitles to videos right and that echoes the title how to add subtitles to videos 2020 right mm -hmm. so it can it can be one or uh, either or right depends on if you're instructional and evergreen or inspirational and curiosity gap now mm -hmm. a good example of this is um i can't remember his surname now his first name's tom but it's not the one that you think it is and he does he does tech ed, um, videos, and he's gone out into the desert to show us some um, uh, weird, weird um, uh, house planning places in the desert that never got used. I okay. can't remember his surname now, um, but yeah, yeah, the curiosity gaps the thing. You need to think would that thumbnail answer your question or make you curious about that question. Both are good. Yeah, right. You have to make them feel something because if they feel nothing, they've scrolled past you. And that's essentially then, I guess, the same thing with the titling as well. Yeah, yeah. See, the title the title could be one of two things. Now, I learned this myself at VidCon um, this year. There's, there's two techniques. I, coming from a web development background, and the reason why I beat Google in search is because I'm aggressive with optimization and search engine. Mm -hmm. I can play the robot game like any other, like... Zuckerberg out there like the only difference is I can drink water like a human being so <laughs> if if you want to go with the title you can be as long as you want if you're being aggressive with SEO but you've got to remember that if you're being aggressive with SEO then you're playing the long game you that video is not going to explode today yeah it's not going to go viral today but it may be that answer to that question for someone in three months time eight months time three years time and it will accumulate watch time yeah. Right, so you can pack out the title as long as you want with all of the keywords that you want within a human searchable fashion, or you go the other route, which is the 
the human optimized route, which is what I learned from Daryl Eaves and Rob Wilson at VidCon UK. And you play human and you answer the, you, you get it within 50 characters. Okay. Because those 50 characters is what you can see on a mobile before it goes mm -hmm. dot, dot, dot. Yeah. Those 50 characters is what you want to scroll through. And those 50 characters should be direct, such as how to download a video, how to subtitle videos, how to mm -hmm. trim videos, how to uh, sell Anything. a toilet roll, yeah, yeah. right? But the 150 then means that the human eye can see it quick enough that it registers before they've scrolled away. They can read it without being cut off because if it's like how to adequately, amazingly, dot, 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 what? Yeah. And now I don't know what's the point in that. Yeah. So, yeah. In the first 150, always get the keyword within the first 150, but then choose if you're doing SEO with long string or if you're doing human with small. Now, if you're doing human, the emotions could carry it viral. Yeah. But if you're doing search, it's the robots that will pick it up and index you over time if you give it enough metadata. Cool. Uh, quick hello to Luke Penny, who's just joined us watching on YouTube. If you've got any questions to ask Alan, we've got him here for a little while. So uh, get them in um, and we'll keep him chained in his room for the time being to uh, get all the answers from the questions. Uh, going on to the next one then, which um, scrolls on from um, the title. Um, this one has come through from Alex and he's asking about descriptions. Now, in the old days, obviously more people were using YouTube on a computer. So descriptions mm -hmm. were very important. They're still important because it shows the first three lines to try and get the, the idea of the video within those first three lines. But how important is a description now, or is it more of an SEO tool? Um, you'll be amazed how many people actually read comment sections. Um, mm -hmm. And I've, I've, I've got a direct case in point, which, which hits you right in the pocket. I made $5,000 in affiliate income last year okay. through links that were solely placed in the description. Now, that means that people had to open the description, scroll down to the description, and click the links, and then act upon them. Now, those people are highly engaged. Mm -hmm. There's also people that choose to read that description to look for more suggestions, to have a look at the next playlist. So, yes, they are a metadata tool. They will help you with optimization. The more information you put in there, the more Google can learn as a smaller channel the behavior and the videos that you need to place it against. So okay. you're not going to read a blog if it's 100 characters long because it might give you the answer immediately, you know, the pollen count in West Yorkshire right now, right? Um, but you might also want to learn what is pollen? How does pollen work? How can I solve that problem? What medication could I take? And that's mm -hmm. also the same with the video description. Now, yes, the big boys don't use it. That's because... YouTube works on behavior. It sees who watches it, where they watch it, how long they watch it, where they go next. Hmm. And the big boys can have vast mass quantities of traffic coming to them to generate that behavioral score amazingly quickly. But if you're a smaller YouTuber, smaller being under half a million, right? Smaller being someone that doesn't drive tens of thousands of views per video in the first hour, then that metadata is crucial in YouTube understanding who you are, what that video is about, and where they can try to push it to find the audience for you. Okay. After all, the algorithm's there to help you. It's not there to hinder you. It's not a game for you to play. You need to just feed it nicely, and then it will, like a good boy, go off and fetch your audience for you and bring them back. Right? Fingers crossed. <laughs> but if you don't throw the ball, the, the, the nice big ball for the doggy to fetch in the first place, it's just wandering around biting random trees, and that's not helpful. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I get, I get you now. So that, that's that's a good answer. I like that one. Um, so, is when you write that description, you've written a description about the actual video. Does it matter how long that is? Obviously, you don't want to use all your characters because you want to include other other information in there as well, like your other social media links. If you are a business, a link to your website as well. So, how long would you say a description generally should be? Should it be just like two or three paragraphs, kind of thing? I would, yeah. Like in an ideal world. Um... The, the first paragraph you need to think of search. You need mm -hmm. to think of the robot that's finding it. The, the second and third paragraph is where you flesh it out a little bit. And right now, as of two weeks ago, there's now timestamps that are crucial for search because the old timestamps you used to put in, you used to click and they used to jump there for you. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go onto a video, 
which has a timestamp, like my recent ones, it now chapterizes them for you, right? And has little subheadings underneath. Okay. These are also now indexed in search. So in the in, in the good old days when you typed how to add blah, right, it would take you to a video on Google and Google's clipped out that 30 seconds for you for you to watch. Yeah. If you <clears throat> timestamps, you're feeding them Google the info, it Holy indexes crap. that and then it feeds <laughs> uh, no word of a lie. And it's as simple as adding, and you have to start the, the timestamps with 0.00. .00. Mm -hmm. Right, because then it knows that's the start of a video, and yep. then as soon as you add that, it starts adding the chapters in the bar, so you can even skip to the bar. It even does like a DVD player where you can scrub through that little part of the bar, a bit like the old annotations kind of thing, but a, a more up to date version. Exactly. Right. So this, so this now feeds that info. It indexes that info. You're helping Google find that answer for someone. And it jumps in immediately. So wow. the description needs to be the first paragraph is for the robots and humans' curiosity. The second and third you pad out maybe if you are talking about, well, this is how you knit, and then you get the wall, and then you blah, 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 right? And then always from now on, just take a minute to watch your own video and then chapterize it. Zero, 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 intro. And then once you've done your blah, 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 which should be about 10, 15 seconds, like, unless you're like, good morning. But Sounds familiar. Like, <laughs> um, how are you doing? How the devil Brilliant. are you? Thank you for asking. Not that I've been watching for a while. And then, um, so you annotate those and then you get into your meat and potatoes and then you zero, zero, whatever at the end, your outro. That way it knows. So Simon could, now talk about anything, not just a topic. This will help Simon specifically and other vloggers. If he talks about, say, um, fixing his car in the middle and he talks specifically about the Nissan and the spark plug, right? He could put in the middle of his daily vlog, um, his spark plugs, and then he's gone to the gym where he, he shows five minutes of him doing, uh, I don't know, pull-ups and, and pole vaulting, right? It now helps you even more index that. So use wow. your description to the best of its ability. The <clears> SEO for the titles, the descriptions, and now the timestamps more than ever, because you'll get ahead of other people that aren't just doing it yet. Yeah, right? people don't know about it. I mean, I, didn't, I had no idea. So well, wow. that's it. And once it's indexed and it's sat on Google, Google is the, the largest search engine on the internet. And the only one that's, that's close is YouTube, YouTube and yeah. it's owned by Google. Yeah. So you help you help it feed each other, and you'll 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 see such a rise. And all, hmm. I did it recently. All I did was I just added zero zero dot dot zero zero and timestamped it. And within like half a day, it was indexed immediately for those timestamps. And I've seen a thirty percent increase on that videos in search alone. Wow, I'm going to try it on this video because we've got so much information on this video. I'm going to try it after this we're finished well, live. Just one simple tip. That's all it was. Yeah. And it's those wow. kind of things that help you. And that, and if you hadn't filled in your description, if you just left your title and left your social media blank, you, you would have shot yourself in the foot. Yeah, totally. Um, so very quickly then, meta tags. Um, yeah. you, can, you briefly mentioned them. How is it just a basic case of SEO? So you look at what you put in your title, you look what you put in your description and make sure that you're tagging that. As, is, does it work like a hashtag is basically what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Mm. Hashtags are dumb. Hashtags do one thing. Yeah. You click on the hashtag, it gives you the result. It doesn't think, it doesn't associate, it doesn't make anything related or relevant. <coughs> the tags teach YouTube a behavior. Now, it is an overlay from the good old days when you could keyword stuff a blog and get to the top of a search engine 15 years ago, right? Back in the good old days when you could just load a load of views into YouTube and that made that video go viral even if you botted yeah. the crap out of it, right? But but tags nowadays are subtle. Because YouTube and Google has learned over 15 years that keyword stuffing is wrong, what the tags are now do as a legacy format is teach the behavior of the video before anyone's been on there in the first place. So it sets the expectations. So here, darling, I'm going to cook you dinner this evening. Or here, darling, I'm going to cook you some dinner this evening. It's going to have chicken. There's a bottle of wine. There's a candle. And there's some really nice music. One is 
a dinner date and one is a romantic dinner date that could possibly lead to something. It's all context. Yeah. If you can set the tags, you can then tell YouTube, this is a business video about income, passive income, affiliate marketing. It can then go, oh, okay, well, these adverts might be relevant and that video might be relevant. And then it will learn to suggest things before you've had those 10,000 views that learn okay. the behavior of the, uh, the human beings beforehand. Mm -hmm. That's cool. I, I like that. So yes, uh, meta tags are important. Um, one question I had yesterday, I answered this one, but it'd be interesting to get your viewpoint on this as well. Ed, um, who normally watches the streams, I don't know if he's watching today, um, asked the question, he's just gone past the thousand subscribers, he's just got the irrelevant amount of watch time. Should he monetize his videos straight away? Let's see if you say the same thing as me. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> you see... I had I'd had a different viewpoint of why yes when so many people are put off by adverts and the amount that you would make would be mm. so minimal. If you I said to him if you're getting like a thousand people watching because you've got a thousand subscribers and a thousand people watch, absolutely monetize your videos. You've got a really interactive audience and they care and give a damn about you. But if you're getting thirty people watch out of that thousand, mm. is there really any point? You're going to make pennies. You're never going to see that sixty quid which you need to oh, yeah. earn, and it's people easy. switch off because. Because of adverts. It's an angle of attack. Should you monetize your videos? Yes, even before you hit 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time. Mm -hmm. It's how you monetize that. I went full-time yes. yeah. full on YouTube at 3,000 subscribers. I was earning a large enough income based on the affiliate marketing links in the descriptions down below before I hit even a quarter of a million views. It's how you monetize those videos. Yeah. If you understand that you won't get Google advertising pay-per-click revenue against it, but you're able to educate people and put out 200 tutorials in a year that teaches them how to market their, net, their, their business, how to sell products, how to stockpile whatever, and then that leads to a client contacting you on a retainer, you've monetized your content. Absolutely. But you've used, but you've used the upfront value that's why I don't, 450 videos, all for free. I'm pumping out videos that are five, 10 minutes in length, some 25 minutes in length. I'm giving all my best information out for free. You can have it. I'll, I'll help you run a business. I'll help you do it. I don't, the, the information, I don't care because you can search mm -hmm. it for me, Roberto Blake, Nick Nimmon, Tim Schmoyer, Daryl Eves. I mean, the list is endless. The only difference is I am the only British one with fantastic hair and this actor. <laughs> doing it for too long but um it's not it's not the content as such that you need to be monetizing it is mm -hmm. your aspect thereof yeah right? how the influencer you... side of it basically exactly like and if if you are a, a brick and mortar business what you're you need to do <clears throat> is show people let's yeah let, let's say you run a pub okay what you do is instead of showing the, the, the mashed people on a Friday night who aren't there right now, because if you are there right now, you should go home, you idiots, and stay safe. Absolutely. Right? But um, let's say you're a bar, a bar owner, right? What you do is every now and then you show people how fantastic the bar is. But what you should do is tell me exactly how you make your cocktail. And like, oh my god! I was think? talking to this my nephew about this, and because he works in a cocktail bar, and I said, "Why do you not suggest to your boss to make content all the way through this period of time when everybody's going to be drinking more anyway? How to make a cosmopolitan? Yeah. How to make a mojito? How yeah. to make the cocktails you make so that when they come out of confinement and they, they, they want to go and have a drink, they go. That's why we're going. We're going to the brain yeah. jar in Hull. Yeah. Because for for two two reasons one that's a walking advertisement for your skill as a cocktail maker mm -hmm. right you make it you sat there you drink it and mm, oh that's fantastic or you hand it to random stranger at the bar and they're like oh that's brilliant <coughs> or don't worry i'm talking too much i'm not no sorry I'm not positive, <laughs> fine um so you you go through every single one of those you you you've got thousands of drinks not only have you now learned that drink but that can now be an advert that's on your YouTube channel, your Instagram, your Facebook, your Twitter, your Tumblr, your MySpace, if that still exists, right? You can remix it with everything else, right? The content is there. You can make a, a, a blog about every tiny detail. But if you want to monetize it, you can also now link to the 
Amazon link of that bottle and every ingredient in the description down below. And the shakers or an and the sieves and the oh god, yeah. And yet that that ebook that you've also written of every blog that you wrote that you now have a, a book of 300, 300 recipes that you can download from Amazon for one ninety nine and you've got that email address. And now that email address is you so you don't have to put adverts onto your video, mm -hmm. but you do have to consider the long-term monetization because if you can get right at the start, all I did is I made a an ebook. It's, it's a Word document that's 10 pages long telling you 10 tips on how to start a YouTube channel. And I was pointing people towards this free ebook for, for, for ages. I've now got yeah. a mailing list of around about 2,000 people, all of which I can contact, all for free, but all are engaged in, they wanted to learn YouTube. So I know 2,000 people want to learn YouTube. So if I was to send an email to them saying, hi, okay, this is my latest video. Go and watch it. It's completely free. And oh, by the way, did you know that I optimized mine with with vid IQ, and I also did these banners with place it, and then I did the captions from Rev. Right, it helps them because they're like, "Oh, I never thought of getting subtitles from Rev. That's fantastic!" Click affiliate link, a hundred dollars for a sign up. Right, so yeah. <laughs> that's how I, I I went full time on YouTube with three thousand subscribers. Right, yeah. you might you, you you could be PewDiePie, and you could well PewDiePie is a bad example. I, I, ran a ch I ran a channel with 45 million views. I made three grand in five years. Yeah. I made five grand on affiliate marketing with less than 10,000 subscribers last year on affiliate marketing alone. And this year, my business is turning over six, six figures. Wow. Fantastic. I sit on a sofa at home. <laughs> right? It's a hard it, life, isn't it? It's not about monetizing the content. It's about the... the the seven steps in front of that that hmm. lead to the value. We need to talk more about this off off the channel. Uh, <laughs> so uh, well, that's what happens when you don't talk to me for five years? <laughs> uh, so vidIQ, um, I've used it myself in the past. I must admit, I, I don't subscribe to it at the moment. Um, it just seemed like it was another cost. What's so good about vidIQ? It's one one of these. If people don't actually, first of all, explain what vidIQ, what the hell it actually is. Okay, so, so vidIQ is a browser-based plugin that helps you optimize your titles, your descriptions, your tags. It helps you compare your thumbnails against rails. It helps you collect your competitors into a list so you can benchmark yourself against them. Or if you're doing that research that I said previously, where you add a load of your, watch a load of your competitors and figure out what the thumbnail basics, the authorities, the trends happen to be. Now, this, this tool takes a lot of the legwork out of, of the YouTube analytics for you because mm -hmm. or you'd have to learn oh, well what does that mean and where does that subscribe and what does that uh, what's a traffic source and why why am I publishing why why is my audience based in India so if I upload at six o'clock why why aren't they so this tool does all of that for you it, it suggests mm -hmm. the best time to upload it crunches through all of your data and everybody else's data to match you against other people and help you pick the best keywords, pick the best trends, understand the balancing of evergreen and trending topics. It's a it's a free plugin that you, you install on Chrome and Firefox. And then if you upgrade, it unlocks a few other tools, direct competitors, more statistics, more analytics. It's now it's not the silver bullet. You can't you, there's nothing like there's one person that's watching this right now, right? No matter what you buy, it won't make you Jake Paul tomorrow. You're not going to be PewDiePie within two seconds. It's right? hard work. Very much so. What, what this is, is a very good tool to add to your toolkit that you use along with the other things that you do, right? Mm -hmm. This won't make you the perfect thumbnail, but it could give you the best title to go with a thumbnail that you spent 20, 30 minutes making. Okay. Right? So right. what does, does it look at the thumbnail then and say, okay, actually this title would work better? Is it that intelligent? Um, there's elements that we are working on within um, that, that may in the long run use AI and Google Cloud mm -hmm. and stuff, right? Um, which isn't a spoiler, just things exist and I'm not under NDAs and stuff, right? So... Um, but no, what, what, what it will do is that there's a, a new tool recently with vidIQ where I upload a thumbnail. Mm -hmm. I can then type in a search term, YouTube tips. 
it will then show me that thumbnail against others and my competitors with that search term. Okay. Right. And, I and can then you see, can compare kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. So I, if I look at six <clears> of them and they're all using blue, but mine's red and mine clearly says end screens and mine clearly says what it needs to be because mine's red and all of theirs is blue. Mine looks different. So it stands out, which could win yeah. the clip. So it, it won't necessarily look at your thumbnail and go, okay, that says the word download. So is it download music, download? No, it's just what it will do is it will help you every step of the way to just make a thing a little bit better. And mm -hmm. that's all it needs to do. If you, if, if you publish a video today and you do a little bit better with the next video and the next hundred videos, that's a hundred times better on the hundredth video than you were on your first. Yeah. My first video, I was in a bedsit with the washing not done in the background, <laughs> wobbling around on a shaky compact camera with the tiniest audio, with the orangest of lighting, right? It takes time, but these tools help with those acceleration and learning gap, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of having to plunder through Google Trends and plunder through all of those blogs and then have a look at every one of those rival videos and have a look at what tags they're most using by mean and median and by average and by who's such... This does all of that for you and then suggests things based on the metadata of your title, your descriptions, and previous tags you have used and previous tags you've done successful videos on that yeah. have led your authority. Okay. And so is all the, are all this functionality available on the free version or would you recommend – because it's not a big cost. It's not a huge cost at all. By any stretch. I can't remember exactly how much I was paying, but it wasn't very much. I think it was about £5 a month or something. Um, so is it worth getting the paid-for version or do you think the functionality is there in the free version anyway? Well, um, uh, it's subject to a, a plug and uh, assuming that Simon hasn't got some form of affiliate link down below. If you go to uh, alanspicer.com forward slash um, vidIQ or vidIQ.com forward slash Alan Spicer, both will work. There's a 20% discount. Here we go um, so uh, vidIQ.com forward slash Alan Spicer is probably the best one. There, we um, go. there you go. So it's, it, it is about... <clears throat> It's about five quid, six quid, right? Uh, which in American money is about, I don't know, 42 pounds and a donut. So <laughs> it's the advantage of being paid in American dollar right now. Um, yeah. So the, the money, the, the, the tool can do a lot for free, mm -hmm. right? It will help you with your tags. It helps you with your descriptions. The more info you give it, the, the more it can help you. Right. And if you're using something like the, the, the code down below, you get 20%. Um, I think there's even like 30 day free trials on certain ones as well. Mm -hmm. So give it a trial, give it a whirl. Um, there is also the Academy. Now the Academy is currently under paid only, but we are unlocking certain em elements to um, beginners. So if okay. you're new to, to making videos and you're new to the platform, if you to download it um, within the next two or three weeks, you'll, you get a, uh, 30 days to more views academy course in which you step through every fine detail and it tells you how to write a title, how to do a video, how to keep retention, what a thumbnail should look like, that kind of thing. Um, once again, at the, mo at the moment, that's behind a paywall, but it very soon will be free. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of value you can get out of it for free. And right now, if you, if you can't spare that five or six pounds, it will still certainly help you. There's also a, a vidIQ app, which was released yep. two weeks ago, um, which, once again, it's there to, to help you with all the statistics that you need in a presentable human fashion. <clears throat> you can look at it from a glance and go, oh, okay, I, I get that. I understand that. So, yeah, I'd, for the sake of it installing on your browser, it's not going to slow anything down. It's 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 free. Um, and then, yeah, if... if, if like I'll be honest, I, I I bumped up against vidIQ five years ago, um, and my learning curve was a bit steep at that time. So I stepped back and I came back to it later. Mm -hmm. um, and there are other tools out there that I'm sure you can find. Which yeah, there's. I, I mean, without wanting to take away from you, but there's other things like TubeBuddy and all that kind of stuff as well. I don't know if TubeBuddy still exists. I'm sure it probably does, um, unless vidIQ have bought so, them. So, subject to 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 you know where I happen to be now. And there are other sites out there. Um, <laughs> I can but, say you can collect your information um, for the sake of, of loyalty and and being paid in America.
American dollars. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there's 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 other tools out there that will help you. Um, but installing something like this, and especially like vidIQ, it takes that learning curve off of you. And then you can also, especially when you're starting, it gives you that little bit of information that you can learn. And once again, well, I'll just take that from that person and that from that person and that stat here and that keyword here. It, you very soon build up a routine and a pattern mm -hmm. and then you start to see improvements. But once Sorry. again, YouTube is Sorry. a marathon and not a sprint. Yeah. Right, there is no silver bullets, no. right? But this is a very good Swiss Army knife, should you need it. So, obviously, not everybody learns in the same way. People might struggle with learning how VidIQ works. If you pay for it, because obviously it's not going to be on the free version, can you get like one to one time with someone like yourself or some of the other experts who were at uh, VidCon earlier on this year? Can you get that kind of one to one situation where you can sit down and just go, look, I, I really still don't understand how this is showing me anything can you help me can you get that kind of help as well with it indeed um under the the vidIQ boost plus program um and even the boost program i believe you can request a channel audit um and within that channel audit we can also run you through features and functionality now at the moment if you request a channel audit within uh, 10 o'clock in the morning till about four o'clock in the afternoon uk time it's likely to be a hairy man that sat in yorkshire that picks up your video voice call who might sound like me a little bit, right? Um, and yeah, we, we walk you through every fine detail based on your need. So mm. some people might not need it at all. They might understand it, but they might have a problem with the human element. Some people might need understanding the branding of things because YouTube's not just one thing anymore. It's not just throw up a video. It's it's you have to you have to to package it nicely. You have to promote it properly. You have to optimize it correctly. You have to blog it. You have to share it. So some people struggle with all of those features. Some people really struggle with one. I'm not graphically skilled, hmm. but I was able to run a web development company because I had other people behind me. Who were so. Yeah you'd learn certain skills and this tool for you might be seo whilst for somebody else it might be thumbnail comparisons or it might yeah. be statistical analysis or competition analysis so you can use the swiss army knife however you wish but yes if you ever wanted a direct audit or a direct communication there is ways to get direct communication with humans like but, me yeah. on a regular basis Fab. Alan, this has been a brilliant hour. And we've had people saying as well in the comments, um, Sam Rourke saying uh, this is great content. Uh, so yeah, there's been a few people commenting saying how cool this has been. Thank you so much for joining us today and answering people's questions. We've had a fair few. Um, and um, if you've got any questions at all now, if you're watching it on replay, just drop them in the comments. I'll chuck them towards Alan and we'll do our best to get some answers for you. Uh, put them in the pants, put them in the pants. Um, and also, um, even though I'm not affiliated to it in any way, shape or form, I have used it in the past and it does work. Um, it's just, I'm lazy. Uh, go check it out, vidiq.com forward slash Alan Spicer. Get him some, where is he? There he is. Uh, get him some money, um, uh, some extra cash. And his links are scrolling along the bottom as well. So if you want to go directly to Alan, uh, you can go check him out on Twitter. He answers his tweets on a regular basis. And uh, also his YouTube channels there as well with regular content going out. And you can leave a comment. And he usually is pretty good at coming back to people on the comments as well, uh, unlike a lot of creators. He understands the point of being social on social media. Um, Alan. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's been um, it's been uh, awesome. And um, yeah, if you've got any questions, like I say, stick them in the comments. Um, we're going to bugger off now. I'm going to go and make another cup of coffee. Um, I'm sure <laughs> Alan's going to go and have something to drink and um, have a good afternoon. Stay safe, Alan, as well. I will do. I'm, I'm just I'm me and my bubble, <laughs> my, my trick wall. I, I, there's no there's no other doors. I just live in this cocoon. Just in that little square there, yeah. <laughs> that's, it. that's it um he just lives on the sweets behind him that's what it is that is a sweet jar isn't it? It, it it is but i think it's got like biscuits that's been in there for like four months brilliant excellent bills bills will keep you going it, anyway please it's brilliant <laughs> <laughs> cool cheers alan thanks ever so much and uh take oh. care of yourself and i'll speak to you soon sure take care